first tapestry are normally dated at the beginning of the 13th century and the presence of corporation foundations witnessed their existence. Some tapestry had existed before this time, but they were only simple and roughly made fragments, usually with heraldic inspiration or animal designs. Since the 14th century, the heart of tapestry making took a huge leap in France and in Flanders, and it spread all over Europe, achieving the period of maximum splendor during 16th and 17th centuries. During the 14th century, the subjects of the designs are generally inspired to the Old Testament. Few characters, a total absence of perspective and frequently with writings and names that explain their history, with lively colors, which see a dominance of blue, red and gold hues. It is the Gothic period. During the 15th century, with the Hundred Years' War, the tapestries makers, haunted by the invaders, take refuge first in the northern cities of Lille, Arras and Valenciennes, and later in the region of Flanders, where the most important centre for the production of tapestry is founded. The raw materials used for the waving are wool from Arras, silk from Italy and silver and golden threads from Cyprus. The wavers are also dyers and have a limited set of 12 colours available. At the end of the 15th century, the court of France, chased away from Paris by the British army, moved temporarily on the banks of the River Loire. This temporary period was to last about a century. Drawn by the orders of the court, the waivers reached the banks of the Loire and create a new style of tapestries with a background of flowers, birds and small animals, the mille fleurs, celebrating the love towards nature with scenes full of grace and poetry. With the Renaissance, the art of tapestry is deeply modified and it links itself with the art of painting, with new techniques in the concepts of both cardboard and design. Raphael adds to the technique the art of composition, perspective, decoration and also adds the borders and the arabesques that were more used in the following years with the grotesque. Symbols of wealth and power, the tapestries become prerogative of kings, nobles and princes of the church, who commissioned the most famous painters to create cardboards as a celebration of their achievements, of their tournaments or as a reproduction of sacred scenes. During the 17th centuries, gathering a group of approximately 100 skilled tapestry workers, Fouquet found his own workshop under the direction of Charles Lebrun, who counts on the collaboration of several artists to create only one cardboard. Somebody would draw the flowers, somebody as the animals, another artist the small figures, and yet another artist would finish the job drawing the landscape. Towards 1660, Colbert founds Le Gobelin with the name Manufacture Royale des Meubles de la Couronne. And in 1663, Charles Lebrun is asked to become the director. In 1675, there were about 800 artists who worked there from different countries and nationalities. At the time of the death of King Louis XIV, the number of goblin tapestries accounted for in the official inventory of the crown furniture is 2,155. The perfection of the design and of the colors are at their peak, and the point is the finest never achieved before. In the same period, the first copies of tapestries painted on silk and linen fabric begin to appear in France and Italy. This is the origin of the reproduction procedure of Édition d'Art de Rambouillet. The technique for this production seems to be hidden in a mystery. The information are rare and jealously kept. In the manufacture of Goblin, a tapestry maker does not tell to another one the particular secret to paint the tapestries and fabric. These painted tapestries are used to decorate courts and palaces, and they are even officially included in crown collections. In 1792, they are used as final decoration in the Ministry of Royal Council Chambers. 
During the 18th century, tapestry becomes more and more a fashion of reproduction and loses its creative spirit. Dabusson manufacturers, founded in this period, create a new style defined as rustic, thicker textural wool. Rapidly, they become specialists in verdure, acquiring a good reputation in this field. With the French Revolution, the Manufacture Royale becomes a state institution, managed by state functionaries. Foreign artists go away, vandalism rules, together with destruction and theft. Some tapestries are burned in an attempt to try and recuperate the golden silver threads inserted in the wave. Il primo impero, the first empire shows the decay of the art of tapestry. Since this date onwards, no more masterpieces will be produced.